Hey, all right, it's another Dueling Excel podcast. That must mean it's Friday. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun at YouTube. Uh, Mike sent me this question that came in to him from Hassan at YouTube. Frankly, Mike, I don't have a clue what you're going to do after I solve this because there's only one way to solve this problem. Uh, Hassan wants to know, he puts in a name and a through date, and he wants to add up all of the sales uh, through that particular column. So I know. I colored this cell red. I know that we're going to use an offset based on that cell. Uh, let's try and uh, uh, do a couple things here. Which row are we going to look for? Well, that's going to be pretty easy. That's the match function, the match of uh, the name here and that set of cells. We'll press F4, comma 0 because we want an exact match. And so Fred is in row 6. Easy, right? Columns. All right. Well. We could use match again, but I'm going to try and do something a little bit more bizarre. I'm going to use equal date value, the date value of this day, May, ampersand, and then quotes space 1, 2009. does not matter what year we use there, because I'm going to take that date and then use the month function. The month function, of course, will return a number from 1 to 12. Okay, so now I know um, how many rows down and how many columns across, so my answer is going to be equal offset. I'm going to start from the corner cell. How many rows down? Well, that's our answer that we got right up here. How many columns over? I'm going to go over one column. And then how many rows tall? Just one. How many columns? Well, that's where we use this answer right here. Now, that's going to return in this case, uh, you know, five or six cells. So we need to wrap that whole thing in the sum function. And we end up with our answer of 14. Let's just do a little test here. Uh, there's our 14. Let's put someone else in. We'll put Joe and December. And our answer here, 21. Joe all the way out through December. And 21. It's working. All right, Mike. Let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, this is a great question. I'll do a slight variation on uh, the formula that Mr. Excel used. Using sum and offset, I'm going to use alt equals for auto sum and then offset. Instead of uh, the starting reference being here, I'm going to start right here. That'll help us out later on avoid one argument. So we'll start there and then how many rows do we need to go down? I'm going to use that match. I'm going to say lookup sue, comma, within this whole range right here, comma, zero close parentheses. That match is saying how many rows down we have to go now to deliver one, two, three, comma, <clears throat> columns. That's how many columns over from this position. We don't need any because we started here. By default, if we leave that out, it'll be assume it's zero. So that's perfect. Height is one. If we leave it out, by default, it assumes it's one. So I'm going to hit comma. And width, we'll use another match. I'm going to say look up March comma within this range here, that date value function formula with the month that Mr. Excel used was just awesome. However, if you don't have dates, you can go ahead and use a second match. All right, so that'll do it. I'll close parentheses. We have all the arguments just slightly different uh, than the way Mr. Excel did it. Six bucks, and if we uh, change this and test it, Sure enough, it's going to work. Ah, but don't believe it for a second. There's always more than one way to do it. I'll show you a different way here. Pretty bizarre. It will avoid using the offset, though, which is a volatile function. And some people don't like volatile functions. What is the index function? Now, you've seen probably many videos on one-way and two-way lookup with index. I'm going to just uh, quickly actually copy this little piece right here, because we're going to use that a couple times in this formula right here, equals index. I'm going to look up in this range, and I'm going to see if I can return that 5 right there using index. So that's the array. The ordinal position will be that match. And sure enough, uh, we get a 5. It's looking up in that range and finding that 5. Now, I want to try and find this 4. Now, this is going to involve doing a two-way lookup because it's in the middle of the table. So equals index. I'm going to highlight the whole table. comma, and we need a row and a column number. I already have the row, which is control V, that match, comma. And now the column, we'll use that match and uh, look up this little piece right here, comma, within this range right here, 
comma zero, close parentheses. So we have our column number and our row number in our index. So index, we're just using this for a two-way lookup. We got the four and the five. Now is that bizarre? If you copy this index right here, control C. Actually, I'm going to control CC and open up the clipboard. Let's try that again, control CC. Escape, and then I'm going to copy this. Now why in the world am I doing that? Index is looking up this value here and this value here. Well, you can ha make the index function look up not the value, but the cell reference. And that will be volatile. Because right now, if we use it this way, it'll give us B10 to D10, which will work inside of our sum function. I'm going to click here on Alt equals. I'm going to highlight this range here. Now notice that the sum function has a cell reference, a colon, and a cell reference. If we highlight that first cell reference by double clicking, and click on this. It inserts the index in place of the cell reference. Double click here and put that second index. We are shoving, we are putting the index function into the context of being a cell reference. There's a colon there, so immediately the index goes, ah, I'm not going to return a value, but instead I'm going to return a cell reference. Enter, and we can see we get the same value. If we change this to uh, February, we see just uh, that we get the same number. Now let's run formula evaluator, alt T U F, tough. And let's just evaluate this. You can see when we evaluate it, we get a B10 for that first index. And when we evaluate this one down, we get a C10. It's all because of that colon. And index is uh, functioning as retrieving a cell reference instead of the value. All right, uh, there's a couple ways to do that. We'll see you next trick. That's amazing. Index and an index with a colon in between, and it gives you the range. Unbelievable. There you go. Hey, thanks for uh, stopping by. Everyone learned something on this one. Point to Mike for uh, that great idea. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.